just how good is a small engine in a large family vehicle? I thought I'd come to Yorkshire to find out. Say you're a family and you're looking for a family vehicle you're on a budget and you want something economical how does the 1.7 base model hyundai ix35 shape up as you can see with the dash it is just graphite gray it is very basic this is the base model there is no sat nav higher spec ones do come with nav there uh, this is the se there is an se nav obviously that's the one with nav this is your climate control, it's dual zone, it has the aircon, standard kind of stuff, digital display, you've got heated front seats even though this is the base model. The radio is pretty self-explanatory, it's easily laid out. On the steering wheel you have radio controls, you have your answer and hang up your phone for Bluetooth, you have your trip computer, it does only go one way which is a pain so you have to go all the way through about seven different pop-ups before you get back to the one you want and on this side is your cruise control very standard very basic indication on this side along with your lights all your washers and wiper blades controlled on this side as you can see from down here there is more than enough room to store a decent sized phone you have two electrical sockets in the boot is another electrical socket so if you've got a small beer fridge or something and you're going away with the family that's perfect, you can plug a little beer fridge in, keep things cold. In the glove box, there is a small gap that you could open up, links into the air conditioning. That turns the uh, glove box into a fridge, so you can keep drinks cold in there and sandwiches cold in there for the children when you're going away. This is very well laid out if you have a family. There is, in the mirror, uh, north south uh, a compass and a uh, digital compass that does get on that does get annoying you can turn it on and off but if you leave it on you can get really annoyed with it but anyway on with the road test see how the old girl does now the gear ratios in this it is designed to be an all-wheel drive so that basically means that the gear ratios are very close together very good on the hill. It's exactly what you want on the hills. There is an issue going downhill. Now, obviously in Yorkshire you've got some serious gradients. You, I've been going across North York Moors where there are 30 degree, 30% 30 uh, gradients. That's going to cause most cars to speed up unless you're using your brakes. So I can't really mark this car down for that. 10 to 20% gradients, because the engine is so small and it does lack torque, engine braking is compromised. It will hold itself in the right gear, but at very high RPM. You will be on the brakes quite a lot if you're in a hilly area in one of these vehicles. But like I said, because the gear ratios are so close, this is very good at getting up the hills because you're always high on the rev band. You're always in your torque range. If you change gear wrong when you're going up a hill, like with most cars, you will suffer. You do get a lot of turbo lag in this vehicle, in the 1.7. I don't know about the 2 litre, I haven't driven it. But if you're going uphill and you think, well, I'm doing about 3,500 three RPM in second, I'll just change it into third, you will get a bit of turbo lag, and on the wrong hill, that really does show up. I mean, along the ground, along level surfaces, on average hills, it's not too bad an issue. But that is something to bear in mind because it is only a 1.7. And a small engine in a large car, especially when you think you'll have your wife, your kids, luggage in the back, shopping, that kind of stuff, is... Jubbly, look at that. 
We'll go down a 12.5% gradient. <laughs> when you've got all of that in the vehicle, it is going to cause, you are gonna feel it, put it that way. Now, if I go into third, this is a 12.5% gradient. It, it's not a major gradient, but the vehicle is speeding up with just me and a full tank of fuel in. There is nothing else in this car. So if you had your kids in here, your missus in here, all the luggage, all the whistles and bells, everything like that, you would be on the brake a lot. So that is something to bear in mind if you're on a budget. Yes, the tax in the two litre all wheel drive is slightly higher and the fuel economy isn't going to be exactly as good. But you're not gonna go through brakes as much you're going to be keeping costs down in other areas. The other thing is with the 1.7, if you want to tow a caravan, I really would not recommend the 1.7. I, I really wouldn't. I'm sorry Hyundai, but I can feel this car struggling up certain hills when there's two of us in here, a full tank of fuel and shopping. You add kids, caravan, stuff like that, you're going to be in a bad way. But if you're not worried about that kind of thing, if you're on a budget, this is shaping up to be a very, very strong contender in the second-hand market. Here comes a Bugani Zonda in Home Firth. Isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful car? Look at that. God, dear. I really wish I was testing that. <laughs> yeah, the second-hand car market and everything, that's what I'm gonna specialize in. <laughs> test driving second air cars for people on a budget well you know Bugani Zonda has lost a little bit of initial value it's, it's a cheap supercar these days you know <laughs> I want to test drive one how do IX35s cope going uphill with the 17 engine in them well let's have a shifty shall we isn't that nice lovely lovely right let's see how she does No worries here. Now you can hill start because of the ratios of first gear and because of the ratios of the box and it's designed to be an all wheel drive. I didn't have to use a handbrake on this hill. So the gearing for the 17 is very good for this kind of work. I can't fault it. However, on a long journey, you will suffer fuel economy reduction because at about 60 miles an hour on cruise control, you're doing around 2000 RPM. So you will notice your fuel economy being lower than perhaps it needs to be at that kind of speed. But for this kind of work, I'm in third gear. I'm doing 24 miles an hour. Now, if you're curious about how much these cost, You'll find a reasonably decent one for about six and a half grand. Full history, 80 odd thousand miles on it. Thank you kindly. So if you're on a budget, it's a good vehicle to look at. Now for anything under about 50,000 miles with the 17 diesel basic, you're looking around the eight and a half, nine thousand pound mark at the moment. This, when we got it, was just under a year old. It had 6,000 miles on it, and it used to, and it was, I should say, a sales rep vehicle. And he'd had family. There was bits of toffee in every nook and crevice you could possibly imagine. We managed to pick it out and clean it away, but it was still a bit of an annoyance. Now this came in at 15,995. We got it for 14,995, and I put some money down bring the payments down. It works out to about £300 a month over five years for what we're paying on it. Depending on how much you're going to put down, what you're going to part X, we had nothing to part X, depends on what you're going to be paying. Now a reasonable five grand part X on this car with the dealership discount that they do tend to apply to all of their vehicles, so why they advertise it for 15995 when they're going to take a grand off anyway, I don't know. It's a gimmick. But with a decent part X, around the five grand mark, put a grand or two down yourselves, you're looking at about 220 quid a month, that kind of area. So it's not bad 
for what it is. But it has done that hill very well. Like I said, because of the ratios in this gearbox, not designed for top end speed, it will get up a hill. You will, because of the size of the engine, here we go. Because of the size of the engine, you will feel it when you've got people in, shopping in, things like that. Well, the iX35 is no longer made by Hyundai. They took it out in favour of the Tucson. They are, as far as I'm aware, going to be bringing back the iX35 in mid-2017 as a hydrogen fuel cell derived vehicle. Now I'm looking forward to that. Now it is going to be expensive. In the beginning all new technology is always expensive so it shouldn't come as a shock. But I'm looking forward to that because I'm personally a fan of hydrogen fuel cell. So just how much room is there in the boot of one of these vehicles? Let's go and have a look. So in conclusion, as you've seen, this vehicle as a family vehicle is very useful. I would recommend the 2 litre all wheel drive version, especially if you want to tow anything like a caravan. Now the 2 litre diesel all wheel drive version is the only all wheel drive version. The 2 litre petrol is front wheel drive, same as the 1.6 petrol. Now the 1.6 in tax is £180 a year. The 2 litre petrol is £225 a year. Now the 2 litre diesel comes in various power variants, from 134 horsepower to 184 horsepower. And that varies between £180 a year tax and 270 from what I found online using the Parker's car guide. Obviously the 1.7, the one I own, is £130 a year tax. Uh, Tyres. Now on this vehicle, and I think it's universal across the range, they're 225. 60 R17s. Fully fit and balanced, they come in from anywhere between 90 and 150 pounds per tyre. Now I went on black circles and I went from a budget tyre all the way to a Pirelli. So on a budget, the 17 is a good one to go for. I would recommend a down tune 2 litre um, because it's only 50 quid a year more tax and it does give you that extra all-wheel drive oomph. This is 113 horsepower. The 2 litre down-tuned one is 134, so it will give you that little bit more that you might want. Now obviously the boot is large enough, it fitted me perfectly, and underneath the floor there is a segregated uh, polystyrene section, as you would have seen. Um, but in conclusion, Hyundai have done a very good job with putting a small engine in a large family car. And it works perfectly well because the gear ratios are tight. I do wish there was a seventh for motorway work, because you will notice the fuel economy drop, but such is life. It's, it's good enough for what you want, and most people use a family car for the school run, around town doing the shopping, going backwards and forwards to a single place of work half an hour away that kind of thing so for what it's designed for I would score this a good 8 out of 10 no car review is ever complete without a 0 to 60 test now I found a nice empty bit of road in Yorkshire national speed limit so I'm not going to be breaking any laws and I'm going to go 0 to 60. <laughs> Might as well. Now, there is nothing coming. I'll even indicate. Are we ready? 3, 2, 1. It's 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm going to sleep. 60. We've hit 60. That's how long it takes the 17 
IX35 to get from 0 to 60. Just how good a small engine car. Well, welcome to the review of the iX35 Hyundai. Now, the vehicle is based on an old Hyundai Elantra platform. The platform is shared with the Tucson. You get two different types of iX35s. So you've got the two litre all wheel drive and the 1.7 diesel front wheel drive. Now, that's completely wrong. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Well, like I said, the iX35 is not designed for speed. It is not designed to be a Nuremberg ring killer, for example. Or Nuremberg ring killer. Oh, fuck, fuck. Nuremberg. Nuremberg, done nuts.